Hey, welcome back to the course. So in the last video, we talked about uh, the information we're going to actually cover in the course, right? So we went over the course modules and different um, aspects in those we're going to cover. We also talked about my background as your instructor. My name is Ken Underhill again, in case you forgot. Um, and then also we talked about the course structure, right? So we talked about some of the sections are going to have um, pre and post assessment questions to kind of test your knowledge. We're also going to have different labs throughout the course, as well as um, a lot of uh, free resources for you to download, right? So I'm sharing my uh, the notes I used to study for the uh, EC Council Computer Hacking Forensic Investigator Examination, as well as um, sharing step-by-step -step guides for the labs, and also sharing the PowerPoint presentations. So in this video, we're going to cover uh, Module 1 stuff. So we're going to cover kind of a brief history of digital forensics, some pertinent information in that at least. Uh, we'll talk about some different challenges for the investigators, as well as the uh, investigative process itself. So as I mentioned, uh, different pre-assessment, post-assessment questions throughout the course. So here's the one, of the one right off the bat for you. Um, so what does SWGDE stand for? All right, so if you guessed answer A, you are correct. It stands for Scientific Working Group on Digital Evidence. Um, don't worry about what that is uh, right now. We're going to cover that a little later on in this module. So computer forensics, and you also hear it called uh, digital forensics. So the main difference there uh, being computer forensics is going to cover just computer components, right? So my hard drive, uh, you know, my... my uh, you know, uh, CD-ROM, you know, my uh, CD itself, uh, that sort of stuff, um, my RAM, uh, whereas like digital evidence might include things like, you know, your, you know, your smartphone, right, or, uh, you know, your camera, you know, if you have a digital camera, that sort of stuff. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, now for the examination itself, you're not going to need to know those um, different like that. EC Council actually um, uses the terminology interchangeably. Uh, but in the real world, um, just know kind of the, the difference there between them. Again, most people use them interchangeably. So what is computer forensics So or digital forensics, right? Basically, it's, it's a, a set of procedures and techniques that are going to help us as an investigator, you know, identify what evidence we actually want to collect or that we can legally collect, right? Uh, so, for example, what does our warrant cover? Then from there, we're going to actually gather that evidence, right? We're going to collect it, um, and then we're going to preserve it. We're going to make a duplicate of it, you know, with a bit by bit. Um, when we do the bit by, bit by bit copy, excuse me, to prevent alteration of it, um, you know, all that stuff is intertwined. And then, you know, from there, we're going to analyze it, right? We're going to interpret the information we have, see what it means to us, and then we'll spit that out in some kind of report or other documentation from there, we would take it like, you know, the, the prosecutor, um, if it's like a criminal case, uh, if it's a civil case, we might give it to our attorney or something. Or, you know, like an administrative case, uh, you know, we'll just hand it to like HR or something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, kind of the brief history here, the couple of items that you really need to know off this list are going to be the low cards uh, exchange principle. Um, so basically what that means is that... Uh, uh, and basically what that is, uh, is, is uh, you know, if I go into a crime scene, I leave a part of me somehow, like I leave something there, and then also I take something with me, right? So that's kind of the low cards exchange principle in a nutshell. Um, if I'm at a scene, I leave something and I take something. The other notable thing here uh, in 1986, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act was uh, passed. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later on in this module. Different types of computer crimes that you um, that you might see out there that are more, the, kind of the most common ones. Uh, phishing, malware, and ransomware kind of go alongside that. Identity theft, financial fraud, uh, cyber terrorism. So if you're not familiar with that, basically, you know, let's pretend I'm a terrorist. Uh, I'm going to use a computer or, you know, computer systems to fur further my propaganda and try to intimidate you. Well, not, not necessarily you, but like kind of a group of people, right? Uh, so it could be like religious-based um, or, or whatnot. Cyber extortion, um, that's kind of where you, um, where you hear about, you know, like somebody, uh, some criminal hacker, like hacked somebody's webcam, right? And then took a bunch of nude photos of them and said, and then sent them an email and said, hey, I'm going to release this, you know, to your, your kid's school unless you do what I say. Uh, so that's basically the extortion aspect of it. Cyber warfare, um, you know, that's kind of self-explanatory. So basically nation states trying to hack each other um, and, and do nefarious things. 
Cyberbullying, um, you know, that's kind of a, a more popular um, topic these days. Um, there's been, you know, several kids that have committed suicide on it. Uh, so if you know someone getting bullied, definitely reach out and help them out uh, and get them the help they need. Uh, but, you know, essentially it's kind of like, you know, back in the schoolyard where the bully would come up to you, you know, push you down or whatever. You know, some of us would punch the bully in the face. Other people would just take the push down and give the, give the bully their lunch money. So a similar, similar thing here. It's just, you know, somebody using a computer and using like social media. Um, it's kind of the main, main avenue there, uh, for the cyber bullying. And then of course, narcotic trafficking, you know, who could forget about that? Um, that's kind of a popular thing, especially on the underground. Uh, people are buying and selling narcotics all the time. So many challenges for investigators, um, come in the, kind of the most prevalent, uh, one would be encryption, um, along with like steganography. So uh, again, this is hiding something inside of something else. Um, and as well as, um, an, you know, anti-forensics. So that includes things like encryption and data wiping and steganography inside of that. Different legal challenges, right? So if, uh, you know, we're, for, for example, we're here in the U.S. Um, and, you know, we track somebody down and they're actually in a country um, with no extradition treaty or a country that doesn't really have like a, a law enforcement infrastructure in place or they're corrupt or something. Um, you know, we have to consider that. Like, is it even worth us trying to, you know, get an indictment or something? Um, different types of media formats we might encounter. So, uh, for example, let's say, uh, you know, let's say I'm an investigator and I'm not good with Mac, but the stuff is on a Mac. Um, you know, so that's a challenge, right? I have to find somebody that's good with Mac. The volume of data. So, for example, if we're recovering like from a raid or something, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the volume of data might be too much for us to acquire in, you know, moving into the next thing there, the time frame, right? The, you know, if, if we got the prosecutor saying, I need this stuff by next week, we might not have enough time to recover the information as well as analyze it and get findings on it, right? So we might have to just choose some of the most common areas that people hide stuff um, when they do stuff. And so that way we can see if there's information in there. So the investigative process. Uh, so basically we're assessing, you know, what evidence do we need? Um, then we're going to acquire that evidence, uh, preserve it, you know, make sure we make a copy of it and then analyze a copy of it. And based on our, our findings, we'll actually go ahead and generate some kind of report. So in this video, we covered kind of the, the history of, uh, you know, forensics in, in a nutshell there, as well as different types of computer crimes. In the next video, we're going to talk about the difference between criminal, civil, and administrative investigations.